This is KC Sports Network, proudly presented by M Prize Bank. What is happening, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Currently on No Other Pod, Kansas City Sports Network. It's the Tio Guys here with uh, my good buddy Chris Wright. I'm Daniel Kuzer. Uh, Chris, I just can't get enough of you, my friend. I've got you on all the pods lately. What's going on, bud? Oh man, not not a whole lot, man. I'm happy to to help out any any chance I can get. It's it's an exciting week, dude. We we don't get to uh, you know, there's nothing to recap because there was no KC current game last week. Uh, there was some national team stuff. We'll kind of hit some hot points there. Um, but other than that, we just got a little little Gotham City preview, man. We're going into the uh, defending champs arena uh, on Sunday at 5 p.m. in WSL Plus. So I'm excited, man. Excited to get back to it. As always, y'all, if we don't, uh, you know, if we don't have any new reviews on our podcast channel, we don't read them. But if you want us to read them, leave us a five star rating and review on Apple Podcasts, and we'll uh, we'll shout your name out there if it's uh, high praise. So that being said, dude, let's hop right in. Where do we uh, where do we start, man? There was there was women's national team going on. Uh, Stina was out doing her thing for uh, uh, Denmark. Uh, Lauren down in Brazil. What's uh, what's the haps? I mean, good win by uh, the U.S., right? Beat uh, Japan 2-1. I can't believe Japan scored in like the first, what, 35 seconds or something like that. But yeah. uh, I'm glad I that... Saw a, I saw a funny meme that was like the old the old Rocky arm wrestling uh, image, which was Rocky and Apollo Creed, and their, their arms are together. And one said USMNT, other said USWNT, and in together at the palms, it said, "Getting scored on in 35 seconds," because <laughs> they they they've done that, you know. But uh, what what grit and gumption to bounce back and get the get the victory against a really good team? Yeah, it's always nice to have your mental toughness tested. Um, and then Jaden Shaw scored a little bit later, but she had a nice goal in there. And uh, I was Sophia Smith earned a PK a little later. So, I mean, we we were knocking at the door all game. Um, Swanson had some good looks, just couldn't convert until we got that uh, that PK opportunity. Yeah, it's uh, you know, they're they're in the uh, what the it, well, that wasn't the She Believes Cup, right? That was just a different competition, wasn't it? Or was it? It, it was She no, Believes. It is. Yeah, yeah. Okay, sorry, I'm looking at the wrong thing. I'm looking at uh, Canada's schedule. Get get ready to talk Canada as well. <laughs> but uh yeah man so the uh uh she believes cup is off and running man uh you think that's the- tonight so by the time you hear this it'll have been last night but yeah the US Canada is tonight US and Canada um okay, that's that's wild man did uh did Desi play at all uh in 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 the last game you know i am not sure i didn't get a chance to watch it but they had a in brazil thrilling yeah went to pks went to That's pks why. so pretty thrilling game yeah 100 percent uh desiree scott was an unused substitute okay. so there you go um but yeah beating brazil in penalties um that's that's never a bad time you know it how do we feel though about this uh u.s canada matchup i mean that's a uh, pretty legendary little north american powerhouses here it's always fun. It's always for bragging rights. I mean, I don't know how much or the importance of winning the She Believes Cup, but I think we've won it every single year. So don't want to drop the ball now, but it should be it should be a good game. I, I'm excited to see the evolution of this team um, since obviously a lot of players left like Rapino. It just, just see this youth come through and, and really kind of be integrated into the team as a whole it is a lot of fun. Um, it, it's a transitional stage, and uh, as long as we keep winning, man, and keep getting better and building on that, it's exciting stuff. Yeah, it sure is. Uh, just to kind of mention, since since all these teams played in the same competition, I'm seeing that uh, Lauren was an unused substitute in that game as well, um, which I don't... I'll tell you one thing right now. I'm a little torn on this. Um you want your players to play, right? Because it's an off week. You're not getting to see your team play because national teams are taking over. So, but when they don't play, I, it's also kind of a little, uh, a little shining 
sh- shining diamond in the rough there because it's like cool. So they didn't have an opportunity to get injured. They, they you know, they're resting, resting their legs, and that's that's what we want as fans of Casey Curran for the last so many years. You definitely want no one to get injured. So, yeah, you know, I mean, shining light. Exactly, I'm with you. Same with Desi Scott, man, who's like just coming back from injury. I'm like, you better take care of her. You better, <laughs> you better put her in bubble wrap. I swear to God. Yeah, that's exactly how we feel every time Dabinia goes out there. Like, just come back in the same condition you left in. Absolutely. Uh, uh, she didn't go on duty with Brazil, right? Because she's injured right now. Yeah. Yeah. But th- this is cool, man. I- I'm definitely going to paying attention to that. Uh, sorry we aren't able to talk the results of that game. Maybe we'll touch on it next week sometime. But uh, for you and me, for our purposes, looks like it's streaming on, on Max tonight at 6 o'clock. You been watching sports on Max at all? Uh, I watched the She Believes Cup games. Um, on, you watched that on Max? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So I've been, other than that, not a whole lot, yeah. Not bad quality. Good quality, yeah. And and Stina over in Denmark, man, is, uh, sounds like we got another scorer on Kansas City Current, dude. What, uh, she had a pretty good goal, didn't she? Yeah, the ball came in and she had a beautiful header. I think she was kind of back post and just glided and floated into the to the area man and, and put it right home so i'm happy to see her you know get minutes i'm happy to see her get a get a goal since she hasn't had a ton of time uh in kansas city that's the thing it's wild to see people called into their national teams who are not getting time on their club team yeah. and i'm talking balasagar i'm talking lauren uh i'm talking desi scott you know it's it's very strange every time dabinia got called in i was like that makes sense She's playing ample amount of time for us. Um, but everyone else has always been kind of a surprise. Yeah, I'm with you. You'd almost think it'd be the other way around, right? Yeah, but you would think so. Yeah. Dude, it goes to show I, the depth too, by the way. It goes to show the depth of this team. that We have national team players that are not even starting. Yeah. Hey, I want to touch briefly on uh, uh, back to the women's national team. A little controversy going on over there with uh, one of their players, man. Do you know much about this? I, I've read a thing or two. I I went down a little uh, uh, rabbit hole on X a little bit and just kind of got wrapped into a bunch of people. Uh, uh, what, what's her name? I, I'm drawing a blank here. Cor- Corbin? Corbin. Albert. Albert. Corbin. I about said Albert Corbin. I was like, that's a dude's name. <laughs> that's pretty weird. Uh, yeah, some transphobic things popped up. Uh some some hate uh, against uh, maybe potentially uh, people reading into things too, right? Like I think she liked something that said that mentioned that Rapino it needs to take a step back or something like that, and she like liked the comment or whatever, and that can kind of come off uh, a little insensitive to your teammates. Yeah, it was, it was something like kind of poking fun at her tearing her Achilles. I think something like that. Yeah, but she didn't post it. All she did was react to it, right? She liked it or something. Yeah, she liked or retweeted or whatever yeah. platform she was using. But you had to be careful, dude. She wears Maybe. number fifteen. You know, that's somebody who's laid, you know, the foundation of where we are today, and yeah, played on some of the worst fields and the worst conditions, and and advocated for women's soccer to be paid and treated with respect. And you know, Corbin has come in and immediately benefited from everything and then just turn around and, and, and to do something like that to, and it's got to be that's, that's got to be tough that's got to be tough I think being a young athlete in general would be very stressful man um, you know we spoke to Jake Davis over on the sporting side of the podcast and I just thought how how careful you need to be and your social media presence like we, Jake Davis doesn't have much of a social media presence and I started thinking like maybe that's for the best you know you can't get in trouble if you just aren't on there, um, it sounds sounds wild. But and I guess she was, Corbin was posting like some transphobic things on her Instagram story um, and whatnot. And it's all right. It's bring it's bringing out both both sides of the situation. People are now just fighting with each other over this thing. And it's like some people are like the best player should play. And it's like okay, I'll agree with you right there. The best player should always play. But that doesn't mean your teammates have to like you. That doesn't mean your teammates have to pass you the freaking ball, right? Yeah. It, what was it? Uh, Alex Morgan and uh, Haran were saying about how these standards of the team were not upheld. 
and and that's something they're going to handle and discuss internally. So we knew they wouldn't come out and make any any comments more than that or any yeah. more than that. I wonder. I cannot imagine. I want to be a fly on the wall when she walks into that locker room. And keep in mind, a lot of the players are LGBTQ. A lot of the sure you know the ones who are not our allies or, or friends with everybody like. That is a lion's den that you're walking into. Yeah. And I don't... Lioness. Li- lioness. And, and her statement, Corbin's statement, really, I don't know, it was okay. Like, she's admitted she would do better and all that, but she didn't, like, truly apologize to all the communities and, like, actionable. Oh, it was... She's 20. She's 20 years old. Like, I can't... You can't expect her to have a well put out statement. You know what I was doing at 20 years old? Making dick and fart jokes and drinking a bunch of beer. Like I, I, I mean, someone has to write her stuff. Like it they need she needs help. I mean, I will say that I, I'm thankful we didn't have social media when we were even younger than 20, right? I know. The amount of trouble all of us our age, right, probably would have gotten into. Uh, it's pretty staggering. I mean, we've obviously are, are different people and, and grown, you know, exponentially. But yeah, you nowadays, man, you got to be careful. It, I don't know. It's going to be tough. And she did get in the game though, a little later, and she yeah. got booed. She got booed, booed as well. Yeah. So, so I just want to touch on that. I know it's kind of a thing uh, in the world of women's soccer right now. It's a thing yeah. and discuss. And if we didn't touch on it and say like, that's not okay. I, I'd feel bad that we didn't touch on that. So, well, it, it was interesting once Rapino put something out. Other players like Sour Brun, I think Alex Morgan, Lynn Williams, Christy Mewis, they all like reposted it with a comment or something like that. So, you know, you have you have one person who who says something kind of kind of crappy, and that's not a reflection of that team. You know, it's it's not great. I mean, I hope they deal with this quickly because also, dude. I'm not saying she's a victim by any means, but it will become that. She'll get bullied. People will bully her online, bully her in the stadiums. And and at such a young age, that could really, really harm her. So I hope whatever action happens, it happens soon. You know, that that's a great point. I mean, she is young. Everybody deserves a, se- a second chance. Everybody deserves to learn from mistakes they, they've made. And, and you see people who've, been pretty steadfast in opinion like that or a mentality and then later on they change they adapt they evolve they learn and and i and i hope that's the case and then to your point i hope people don't bully her i hope it's more of a i don't know an education but kind of it it would make it worse and the last thing you need is the anti-lgbt community to use her as like a martyr right right and turn around and flip it and say she's you know she's a victim of all this hate coming from the other end and it doesn't need to become politicized right it just needs to be handled dealt with and alert a cautionary tale learning experience and go from there for sure uh moving on we have a game to preview okay um we we've yet to mention that we have a special guest joining us today uh the di bernardo boys get to talk to vanessa di bernardo uh <laughs> it's gonna be I'm very excited, man. I, I, we haven't recorded it as of talking right now, so uh, I can't really say that I'm excited for y'all to hear it because I don't know. I don't know if I am excited, but it, I'm excited to speak with her, and yeah. it should be fun. Yeah, exactly. So uh, you'll you'll get that here in a little bit, guys, because it's a. Uh, I'm sure she has a lot to tell us, man, as she's like a veteran of the league. So, with that being said, dude, we are going in to enemy territory Sunday at five, Gotham FC. What do we expect from the Batman team from Gotham? I just love that. It, I love it. it. It's so cool. It's it's so cool. Yeah. I'm expecting a battle of wills and who can implement their game plan on the other. I know that sounds cliche. I know that sounds easy. But we're the highest score, one of the highest scoring teams in the league, one of the best offenses. Gotham, one of the best defenses. I think they have the fewest goals um, scored per game so it's going to be a powerful offense versus a very good defense yeah this is their home opener by the way oh wow okay so that's pretty fun uh that's the stadium the atmosphere should be buzzing yeah i mean first game since winning the championship right so 
going to be pretty pretty wild. Um, Lynn Williams and Rose Lavelle have not played so far. They've been out all year to this point. Um, as of right now, I don't think they would play. I haven't heard anything otherwise, but you know, there's not a lot of transparency on that kind of a thing. So I would expect them not to play. Um, can't rule it out, but I would expect them not to play. But their back line is still really good. They got Jenna Nicewanger, Rookie of the Year, um, Tierna Davidson, National Team Player, um, Sam Hyatt, a really good player, and then uh, Bruninha on that that right side, um, Brazilian international player. Uh, and then they also have Kelly O'Hara, who also plays on that right-hand side, so I believe they've split minutes of the last couple games. So, I'm, you know, Midge Purse, too, tearing her, um, I think it was her, her ACL or Achilles, I'm, I can't remember, both are terrible, uh, I think it was her ACL, but she went down injured in a game, got back up, played with it, and then eventually came out. So she played with a, a torn ACL. Yeah, she's so that's she's pretty done. that she's it's done that. It's terrible. She was it. I think she was the MVP of the championship game last year. Or should have been. So we don't have to deal with her, but that's unfortunate. Well. Dude, this is the this is the first time we played them since they clinched a playoff spot that then let them run through the playoffs and win the trophy. Yeah. Do you remember that? If we, they wouldn't have even been in the playoffs had we tied them, right? Yeah, I think yeah, All we had to do was a draw. Yeah. It, Wild. And a lot of our uh, players didn't play. Oh, sorry, no. Well. It was a 2-2 draw. That game okay. was a draw. But if we would have won, they don't even make the playoffs. That's wild. So stupid. Uh, remember Allie Krieger and her like goal line save in that game? Yeah. Terrible. I think Spanstra had some good good looks. I think she had a goal that game as well. Yeah. Uh, did you know there's four players on Gotham that uh, used to play for us? Four. Can you name them? Uh, Lynn Williams, Cassie Miller, uh, Kristen Edmonds, and oh my gosh. Yeah, I don't know if you're going to get this one. Oh, 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 Abby Smith. Hey, wow, the man knows this shit. Look at him. Uh, that's pretty wild. You know, uh, no, says good things, I guess, that that championship team has players from Casey Current. Uh, dude, they're going to host a ring ceremony and a banner raising ceremony this game. Like, the crowd's going to be into it. This is going to be a blast. What What a chance. To make another statement. Yeah. Spoil that party. Spoil the party. Make another statement. I mean, not only are we like, you know, on ABC and ESPN and, and people are watching our games and we're incredibly entertaining, but to go to the championship's house while they celebrate their ring and, and rain on their parade. Yeah. You know, that, that'd be such a statement win. Another statement win. It's, a, uh, uh, you know, one of the, I don't, I think this is just worded incorrectly because I can't imagine that he's there. But this says uh, two NFL Super Bowl champion MVPs will go head to head as owners of NWSL clubs when Gotham FC co-owner Eli Manning plays host to Casey Current co-owner Patrick Mahomes. I don't think Patrick's going to that game. I think it's just worded a little differently there at the end to say they're hosting Patrick. He He's not making it out there. No, and they're just trying to... Hype it up for whatever. Try to hype it up. Yeah, MVP. You know, we don't meet. We don't need men to hype this game up. We don't need. <laughs> we don't need men. We don't need Super Bowl winning MVP. We don't need it all. I love you, Patrick. It's great, but like, we don't need that. We're here, uh, right? Eli, Eli will be out there though, uh, participating in like the the pregame festivities as well as Allie Krieger. She's going to be out there signing autographs and stuff. So for stuff just keeps adding up, and I really hope we spoil the show. So, that being said, um, anything else to talk about in this game, man? It's at, you know, they play at Red Bull Arena, and, you know, the Red Bulls can't even fill this place up, for God's sake. So, it's, it's I think Gotham FC gets more fans at their games than Red Bulls do sometimes, you know? But it's, uh, they're going to have a freaking, all this stuff. I'm just, I, I, if I lived out there, I'd be excited to be at this game. Like, it just sounds fun. Well, it's one of the toughest remaining games on on our schedule for like the next five, I think it's the toughest. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm trying. 
I could see that. I mean, you're talking, uh, you know, you got Bay FC, Angel City, Houston, Seattle, your next four. So, yeah, if, if this is our toughest game in that five game stretch, probably so. so th- their I offense mean, is not picking. Yeah, their offense is not great. Uh, they don't create a lot of opportunities. Um, I was kind of curious. You know, we've given up a lot of goals or goal scoring opportunities with balls coming into the box, us not defending the box very well in the air. Um, we have won more aerial duels than they have. I mean, it's just yeah, nifty little stat there. Hopefully that comes into fruition during the game. So hopefully we can defend those crosses. And uh, man, we just got a they got a tough defense. We got to break that defense. Well, dude, we are averaging damn near you know a little over three and a half goals a game, and so that's where I'm. I don't know. I'm just like, where are these goals coming from? Probably three three new players. I'm just so excited to see, man. Uh, Di Bernardo is going to be good for something because she's going to get that Noah the, that currently r- rubbed today. And then, uh, uh, you know, she's going to assist or something like that. Yeah. So real quick, goals per match. The current are, we have 3.7 goals per match. Um, we're first. Gotham is 14th at 0.5. So yeah. this really is a, and they've only conceded a half a goal a game, by the way, as well, which is top okay. of the league. So it really is offense, defense, who can who can dictate the game or, or, or their tactics. It's going to be great. We'll see if we can uh, talk to Vanessa a little bit about uh, you know giving us the giving us the scoop for the week, man. Training for this for for Gotham and uh, going into a hostile territory to to get points. So, and one last thing is. Some of our players might be back or healthy enough to at least get some minutes. So, hey, um, Dabinia, Cooper, and Michelle Prince, we might maybe see an appearance there. A couple minutes maybe in there, getting, getting back in. Who knows? I'm excited. Firepower. I feel like it's been too long. Yeah. And it's only like, been a week. Yeah. That can't hurt, right? Yeah. Firepower. <laughs> exactly. Well, cool. All that being said, how about you all uh, stick around, sit right there because. We got Vanessa DiBernardo coming at you. We'll be right back. We appreciate you supporting KC Sports Network by listening to our podcast. You have helped us become the highest ranked Chiefs podcast network in 2022 and 2023. And don't forget about our daily Substack newsletter, the best written analysis you can find on the Chiefs straight to your inbox every day. KCSN.substack.com. All right, folks, as promised, we are here with the, uh, the, the maestro of the field. Vanessa D. Bernardo, midfielder for Kansas City Current. Uh, Vanessa, thank you so much for being here. How's it going? Yeah, thanks for having me. It's going well. It's uh, gosh, we're just, it's awesome to have you here. We're always talking your praises on here for the last couple of years, and uh, uh, you're always you're already doing big things at the club. So yeah. I kind of want to uh, kind of start a little bit at the beginning here and uh, kind of go through the career a little bit with some questions with you. Okay. So you grew up in a soccer family. Um, your dad was on the men's national team. Yeah. Um, so you've been exposed to the game at a very young age, and it's just kind of been a part of you. What are your earliest memories growing up with uh, with soccer and with a father who played it at a very high level? Yeah, I think it was just kind of like a family thing for us. Um, I remember kicking a soccer ball as soon as I remember, honestly. Um I have an older sister that's three years older than me that played when we were younger as well. So I think she obviously started a little earlier than I did, but I was always tagging along. My dad was always coaching and bringing me along. So it just was like a family thing that we all just really enjoyed. And and I was always outside and um, playing around. So that's kind of how it all started. Were you able to uh, uh, kind of work closely? with your dad in that sense? I mean, was he kind of around to to really coach you in a a meaningful way? Oh, yeah. My dad, pretty much since the age of like eight, was my coach. Um, So, yeah, he as my club coach all growing up um, until I went to college. So um, definitely got my two cents from him. (laughs) Um, Was coaching me all throughout kind of my young age and, and still we still talk about it. So. Um, he's still there, giving me his feedback. <laughs> Did you ever get to travel with him? Yeah, I mean, doing like club stuff, he would be my coach, so he would travel and and we would play. And um, 
he'd be coaching my team and also my sister's team. So, um, yeah, it was pretty much a family, family thing for us. That's awesome. I, I mean, learning from your dad, you know, you were a blue chip recruit, right? You're a pretty sought after recruit. What was that like, you know, having his last name, but also kind of blazing your own trail as well? Created a name for yourself. Yeah, it's, that's a great question. I think he um, was such a well-known player during his time. And um, you would have people kind of come up to me, oh, Di Bernardo, last name. Um, you play a lot like your father and and things like that. But I think he did a good job at allowing me to have my own path as well. Um, he, I think, allowed me to kind of spread my own wings and didn't necessarily um, make it about him. And I think that was that was great for him as well that's so cool because you can i mean it can go one of one of either way you know what i mean it's like he could be super strict and you could have really bad memories around that um and it's really nice that he was just an open uh open book for you to learn from and and develop yeah um so the nwsl draft has just kind of exploded over the last couple of years um we've been hearing about all the new players um can you tell us about your draft day experience probably much years ago right yeah 2014 now Yeah, very different. Um, I remember it was early morning. I was at home. There was not really a draft um, experience per se that they have now, but I was literally just sitting at my kitchen table waiting for a phone call. (laughs) (laughs) I think the draft was um, over Twitter. Um, So yeah, that's kind of, I got a phone call and, and that was that. So it was nothing like big for us. It was pretty low key and um, Chicago actually took a timeout right before they picked me, I think just for fun, um, <laughs> which is something I remember, but yeah, um, it was memorable. How do it felt good to, uh, I mean, stay close to home, right? Grew up in Naperville. Is that right? Yeah, that's it. Suburb of Chicago. So, I mean, you've, you grew up in the youth system there and, and, and played for, uh, in Illinois for college. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, for Chicago, uh, Red Stars to take it is pretty, uh, Got to be pretty meaningful. Yeah, I think it was it was definitely special to um, be picked by them and and start my career there and be around family and friends and um, have them come to games and have a support system outside of soccer. Um, that was great. So to be able to start my career there was really nice. Did you celebrate? Did you have like a big celebration when you were drafted, or was it pretty just low key because? She was eating breakfast, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, it was really low key. It was just a phone call, and okay, now what? <laughs> On to the night. <laughs> um, when you came from Chicago to Kansas City, it was like the, the introductory to free agency under the CBA, right? That was a new thing for for a bunch of athletes. You were one of them. What was that process like for you to navigate, and um, how was that experience? Yeah, it was different than I was expecting, to be honest. Um, it was a little stressful. <laughs> um, but I think it allowed me to kind of really reset and be like, okay, hey, what do you really want? Um, and allowed me to maybe look at things that I might not have looked at. Um, so I think it's great for players to have the opportunity that they might not have known they needed. Um to be able to kind of really assess the environment that you're in and is this the right environment for me and, and, and actually hear about other teams environments um, and get to know that experience. So it was a stressful time, but I think looking back at it, it was something that I didn't know I needed at the time, but it was something really good for me. Nice. I would think that uh, building a a women's purpose stadium probably uh, uh, checked the box on there too, right? (laughs) Yeah, I mean, coming into this environment and hearing what they were doing for the the players that the league and women's sports in general was just something that was super special. And um, also just hearing about the team and the players and and how well they they got along in the culture um, was something that was pretty contagious as well. So (laughs) I'm sure, Uh, you know, when you came here, I think you stated that one of the factors in your decision was what the team and the ownership group were doing for women's soccer. Well, now you're here. You've been here for a little bit. Um, what are some like positive factors that you've experienced outside of what you were expecting? Yeah, I knew Kansas City had like a great sport culture, um, and I heard all about it. And 
you could feel it when you came into this environment and played at at um at, in the games but being here and just seeing how connected the city is to their sports teams um it's it's contagious and i think that's something that i knew was here but i didn't really know until you experience it um and just knowing kind of how into the fans are to the sports and how connected they are to with the city um it's super special and i honestly couldn't have guessed that or even known that this was what it was like so it's um something that i'm really thankful to be a part of yeah we we often joke on the podcast about your name vanessa di bernardo is going to be the answer to a trivia question one day when we look <laughs> back and be like who scored the first goal but <laughs> What was that moment like for you when you scored the first goal in CPKC Stadium? What was that moment like for you, both personally and professionally? It was special. I think I'm very thankful that I was an easy (laughs) tap-in. In the moment, I was just literally like, just put this in the back of the net. And I think it was also just kind of a relief for all of us. I think there was so much build up to the stadium and performing and winning that game that um, I think just starting it off on the right foot and scoring early was um, something that I think you could kind of see the relief in all of our kind of celebration. Um, But it is kind of a full circle moment. I missed a lot of last year and, and being able to kind of be back on the field and and play again and be a part of that moment um, was special for me. I think it was, uh, oh, sorry, Chris. Go. No, I was going to say, I, I could win the Powerball and I would not look ex- as excited as you did when you scored that first goal. So it, it was such a, a fun moment as a fan and, and the whole crowd like erupted. That might have been one of the loudest moments I think I've ever experienced as a Kansas City Current fan. Yeah, it was it was pretty cool. And I think it's a memory that I'll have for the rest of my life. And, and to have that and experience that was with the fans was was special. It's uh, it's interesting. You say it was just a tap in, and yet you kind of lasered it into the net. <laughs> <laughs> I had to make sure. Yeah, you know? <laughs> just an easy tap in. <laughs> uh, uh, oh gosh, Vanessa, you're having one of the best starts to your professional career. You're assisting mm-hmm. goals. You're scoring goals. You're directing traffic out there. It just looks like looks like you belong out there. I mean, you're you're just becoming a veteran. Um, it has to feel great. After the injury last year kind of kept you from contributing at full capacity. Um, So how are you feeling about this fantastic start for you and for the squad? And what's the driving force behind it? Yeah, I think we're, as a team, just really kind of enjoying ourselves. I think um, we had a good preseason. Um, As an offensive group, we've been giving structure, but also leeway to kind of create our own and to create our own kind of attack. Um, so I think it allows us to be on the, our own page or the same page, but also be our own players and and not take away from who we are as players. So I think it's kind of been fun for all of us to kind of connect and, and just be around the ball. And I feel like some of the goals and chances we're creating are, are good soccer goals. And I think that's something I'm, I'm, excited about looking forward for the rest of the season i mean you've raised fan expectations too we're kind of looking at uh expecting four goals a game now so it's kind of getting a little ridiculous <laughs> yeah hopefully we could keep the goals coming but just not the games as close as they've been <laughs> exactly exactly you mentioned the flexibility i think i've seen you up more towards you know pressing the keeper more than i have any other point you know with you being with the current when you do that, Eric, you you're just telling the rest of the midfielders like get back and you know you're just going forward, or is it one of those things where um, you have to communicate that like on the spot that you're going to press and they just kind of have to support you? Yeah, it's it's kind of what you feel in the moment. Um, it's I think a part of sometimes our game plan to to press a little bit higher and and between me and um, Pia, usually we're kind of setting the press and and we're triggering kind of the rest of the team to also step forward as well. So um, it's kind of it's been fun to to kind of defend to attack. Um, so 
it's I think allowing us to to really kind of create the different chances um, in higher up the field. It's it's been wild to see. I mean, almost everyone looks like they have a knack for goal. I mean, even your your backs are coming yeah. forward and and providing that attack as well. It's been very fun to watch. Um, uh, speaking of being sidelined last year, how do you deal with something like that? I mean, the, the fans are told that you're you know you're in concussion protocol, so obviously not that scary stuff. We're always worried about that kind of thing. But how do you fight the obvious frustration that comes with something like that and not being able to help your team in the way you'd like? Yeah, I think whatever injury you're going through, whether it's concussion or something else, I think when you're injured, um, you have to kind of take a step back and and look at how can I be a team player in a different way. Um, you obviously can't be out on the field and you can't contribute in this, the way that you're used to being able to contribute in. So you just want to still be able to be a good teammate and help in the areas that you can. Um, but you also have to kind of look at your overall health and and take care of yourself too. So I think last year was a challenge for me for sure. Um, just with concussions, you never kind of know when the end is. Um, so you're just trying to be a good teammate and and help in any way you can, but also kind of be there for yourself through the recovery process. So um, that was something I was trying to kind of balance last year. Good point. I mean, the process now is nothing to scoff at. I mean, there's so many tests and everything. Back in the day, it's like here's a couple Advil, get back out there, you know. <laughs> so, but we're we're happy you're out there now and and looking healthy. So, thank you. As it stands right now, the current are at the top of the table, three game win streak against all you know really tough opponents. Essentially, must see TV, right? We're putting up three, four goals a game. We're on ABC, ESPN. What's different about this team right now compared to last year, other than the obvious, you know roster and, and staff but is there a different mentality that we have this year yeah I think um we start we start off strong so I think that definitely helps um get the momentum going I think um like I said before our preseason was good I think it allowed us all to kind of get on the same page we have new coaches we have new players we have a ton of new things so I think um taking the time to really all be on the same page and have that same idea of what we're going after um, has kind of really driven us to each game go out and compete to try to win. Um, we're looking at the season in short term. So like game, game by game, game by game by game. And I think that's really helpful. It makes sense. I mean, there are, there are so many new players too, and it seems like y'all have been played together for a while. So, I mean, that can only show that preseason has been, was very successful. Yeah. Yeah, it was it was good. I think um we've had to kind of navigate players going into national team and coming back and stuff like that. So I think we haven't even fully all trained together that much, <laughs> which is exciting because I think that just shows that we have so much more growth and we can like push ourselves to be so much better than where we are at right now. For sure. It feels like you have a lot of good soccer brains out there that can just kind of speak with their play instead of with their words. Mm -hmm. um, if that makes sense, it's just, it, yeah. just what I feel. You read each other, right? You can read with her. Yeah. 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 And I think that helps with um, kind of what the coaching staff has given us. They've given us some structure, but the opportunity to just still be creative and be ourselves. That's what we had Ellie Wheeler on a couple of weeks ago, and she kind of said the same thing, how, you know, she used to be a striker and coaches like, do you? Yeah. So yeah. that's really cool. Um, in a press conference, you mentioned uh, uh, that there's so much more to Timwa Chawinga than what we see. Um, what other players stand out to you in training or uh, in a match day? Oh, that's such a hard question. <laughs> yeah. I'll give you a chance to brag on your on your buddies. <laughs> yeah. I, um, I mean, everyone's so great. I think. Obviously, we're trying to create relationships throughout the team, and um, I've enjoyed so far getting to play with Bia. I think she's a great player, and um, she's fun to be able to play with. She wants to play, connect, and and pass the ball, and um, so I've I've enjoyed kind of getting to to play with her so far, and um, and also shout out to our back line. I think they do a lot of the dirty work that they don't always get recognized for, so um, they definitely kind of. And the glue for us. 
Absolutely. B, B is a big one. She's a big presence out there. Mm-hmm. Um, it just seems like she really knows how to hold up the ball. I mean, yeah. she, I, I remember we watched Alyssa Thompson try to take it from her and was oh. unsuccessful. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was fantastic. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. She knows how to use her body super well and uh, she's super technical as well. So um, honestly, being able to play off of that has been um, fun for me and and she's created so many of our chances. So it's it's been fun to play with her. Nice. As a as a veteran, you're literally literally playing with children out there with like Claire Hutton, Alex Pfeiffer, but well, like what's it like to play with, with somebody that young? And and what are your thoughts on the NWSL under eighteen process of, of path to being a professional? Because would you and would you have done that? You know, coming up through the system, if you had that opportunity as well. Yeah, I think those players are just so eager to learn. Um, which is exciting. I think as a veteran player, you can, you can offer, um, some guidance and, and when someone's so eager to learn and, and you have that experience to be able to like help them grow as a player is pretty exciting and and special to be a part of. Um, as far as if I would have done it, I'm not sure. (laughs) Uh, At 18, I, there was maybe a professional league. I don't know if there was at that Mm -hmm. time, actually. Um, so I do think you do get a lot of experience going into college and, um, playing and, and your, that experience might be different. You might be more of a leader in that environment and you're working at different things than coming into the environment at 18 and, and maybe not being a leader, but, um, it's definitely exciting to see that happen in our league and, and see these players come in and get that opportunity and, and they're doing well with it. So um, I think it's exciting for the growth of the league. And, um, and yeah, we're just going to keep help, helping them and, and bringing them along. And, and they've been great asset to our team so far. Yeah, I mean, Claire's been a mainstay in that midfield there. Uh, yeah. It's been just wild. They're getting more minutes than, than I guess I maybe thought they might. So it's really cool. It shows the trust with the management and all that. Yeah. Yeah, they've done well. Um. Outside of, of the Red Stars loaning you to uh, Perth, Australia for a bit, um, you really haven't lived outside the Illinois area all that much. Is that right? That's correct. Okay. <laughs> so uh, what's it been like to come somewhere else, like to come come to KC and, and how are you settling in? I, basically, give us the, the DiBernardo Bernard, guide to KC and all that. What are, your, <laughs> what are you doing around here? I've enjoyed it a lot. I think I'm surprised at how much I've enjoyed it. Um, I think... I was going to, I was a little more nervous of the transition of, again, moving out of state, moving away from family and friends and, and just being somewhere new and not having that support system, maybe outside of soccer to kind of get away. Um, But I've really enjoyed living here. I think it's a great city. I think um, it's different than Chicago. Obviously it's a little smaller, but I think that's something I've actually liked. Um, But I'm a big foodie. So I've just kind of been off and around different restaurants trying new things and and just getting to experience the city so i've i've really really enjoyed my time here where uh where were you living at in chicago i was in the city so i was in um like fulton market west loop area so definitely Hi. lots of food options around there <laughs> oh, sure yeah i uh i lived there down there in streeterville for a little bit cool. and uh yep. i guess it's probably better to not have that long commute to the stadium yeah. You know, KC has a little more accessible situation for you. Yes. The driving and not traffic and parking here is wonderful. <laughs> All right, for sure. That's awesome. Uh, before we let you go today, kind of want to transition to kind of some fun stuff, uh, off the field stuff and whatnot. So soccer's life and all that, but uh, what do you what do you do with your time in the off season? I mean, do you have any hobbies? You Do you get down on video games? Ellie Wheeler was a gym rat. <laughs> Uh, you like to travel, anything like that? Um, not a video gamer, but <laughs> I do love to travel. So, uh, my husband and I will usually try to take a trip, um, in the off season and, and go somewhere, explore their culture, try their foods and, and kind of get away for a little bit. Um, but yeah, I've only had one off season here. So I went back to Chicago for a bit and, Saw some family, but it flies by. So <laughs> it's the holidays, really. So um, nothing too crazy. 
It's yeah, my it's favorite place you've been to or a place that you want to go in the future, future mm-hmm. travels. Um, I'm a traveler, so you piqued my interest. Like, I'm all in it now. Yeah. So we've done a trip to Italy and Spain. Um, we would like to go to Greece okay. um, and probably go back to Italy. And we went a little bit more south and go a little bit more north. But honestly, Europe, I really enjoy um, going there. And it's so easy to travel once you're there. So um, and the food and it's just such a different culture. So I, I really enjoy it. I love it. A lot of food mentions. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but as how far out would you say you plan for an international trip? Ooh, um, well, our schedule is kind of hard. Yeah. So probably not more than a month and a half. Okay. We're probably starting to to plan. This man here, Chris, was like, "Yeah, I'm going to Japan in three weeks. Just bought tickets." I was like, "What? How do you just go to Japan <laughs> in three weeks?" The man's a nomad. It's crazy. I actually have been to Japan. It's, it's oh, okay. Crazy. Yeah. When did you go? Uh, our U20 World Cup was there. Okay. So we traveled around a little bit um, playing games and stuff. Loved it. Nice. It's such a fun place to be. Yeah. yeah. Um, nice. Outside of soccer, outside of soccer, who inspires you the most? Oh, gosh. Um, <laughs> <laughs> There's so many ways to answer this question. Um <laughs> I would say, obviously, my family, um, my dad and my mom, they inspire me in different ways, which I think is nice. They have a great balance. Um, from a, like, women's athlete standpoint, I think Serena Williams um, is a great role model and has kind of pushed the boundaries and, and really opened up um, that avenue for women athletes. Awesome. Big, big names there, right? Big hitters. What, what's the most challenging part of training for you? Oh, um, being around all these young kids, you don't have to stretch much anymore. Just run out there. <laughs> I wish <laughs> it's not like that anymore. Um, I think the most challenging, especially in this league and the length of time of the season, is um, being consistent. I think consistency is key um, to being able to be a player that you can be relied on and know what is going to be expected of you when you go out and play. So I think um, when I was younger, my consistency was a little up and down. And um, I think that that is something I strive for is to be kind of a consistent player, um, whether it's in training or in games. Nice. Nice. And, and, you know, you get older, you kind of fall into like routines, like what works for you and stuff like that. Yeah. Really. Yeah, definitely. Um, Ellie told us that she wears a lucky pink headband every match. Um, she's been doing it for a long time. She even wears a shin guard upside down every game. Uh, do you have any piece of gear that you have to wear every time or any uh, pregame rituals or superstitions like that? Uh, nothing like that. Um... <laughs> Why do you say it like that? I'm healthy about that. <laughs> The only thing I really do is I put my left shin guard on before my right and my left shoe on before my right sock and everything. Okay. I'll put them on like left sock than right sock, but um, it's always the left side. All right. That's (laughs) that's pretty boring, but we'll take it. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Sorry. (laughs) I try not to get into superstitious things because then if you don't have it, you're... (laughs) <laughs> true this yeah. slippery sport right yeah yeah <laughs> uh how does the squad celebrate wins both big and small do you guys you know go out and do something big or you just kind of keep it low key when you pull out a victory uh probably depends i think we know it's a long season right so um these three wins are great but we also have so much more to to play so i think right now we're we're staying pretty level headed and um i think after the first game in the first stadium at um the first game of the season we were pretty excited about so i think um we went out and celebrated a little bit but <laughs> um <laughs> i think we're we're pretty um mindful of um how long the season is and, and kind of taking it game by game. Nice. 
Uh, yeah, Labonta was out there dropping microphones and whatnot. <laughs> <laughs> always done. Uh, she's a showman. The showmanship is. is there. <laughs> so I, I'm always enamored by an athlete's diet. I mean, it shows on the field who's taking care of themselves, both physically and, and uh, uh, injury-wise and stuff. But super important. Um, can you share an experience of how maybe tweaking your diet uh, improved your performance or maybe your recovery? Yeah, I think obviously your diet's super important. I think something that I've gotten into a little bit more recently is juicing. Um, and I've noticed kind of when I do that consistently, I feel a lot better. Um, I think getting more nutrients, anti-inflammatory with when you're using certain things. So I think um, that's been something kind of fun that I've been kind of messing around with and um gives me something to do when i get home and stuff like that so um yeah that's something as i've gotten a little older i've noticed uh that has helped me from a i think more of a recovery standpoint nice so you got like a like a juicer at home an industrial size juicer and whatnot not industrial but i do have a little juicer at home and and try to use it as often as i can (laughs) are you doing recipes or just doing your own thing what was that Oh, sorry. Do you are you, do you have recipes, or are you kind of just making it up as you go? Um, a little bit of both. I have a book that gives me ideas, but then I've I've kind of found things that I like, so I'll just kind of make those. What's your favorite? What's your favorite juice? Your go to juice? My go to is probably a green one. That's just the normal like celery, spinach, cucumber, ginger, um, apple, lemon. Sometimes. Um, but it's fun in the summer kind of adding watermelon or strawberries or pineapple um, to give it a little bit more of a, a fruity taste rather than a bitter one sometimes. <laughs> tune, tune in next wow. week. I will probably, bu- I'll be buying a juicer this weekend. Um, you started the whole thing. You didn't even know it. You have no idea what you started. Uh, anti-inflammatory? I'm in. <laughs> well, I get your ginger and work, you know? <laughs> yes. There, there you go. What, what's the funniest or the most embarrassing moment you've ever had in practice or a game? Uh, I don't know. There's nothing that kind of jumps out. When I was hitting that tap in really hard, I was making sure that it wasn't going to be that. <laughs> that is why I put so much pace on that fast. <laughs> um, but... Yeah, I wish I had something for you, but nothing's coming to mind right now. I think Ellie mentioned that she gets Meg by Dabinia, but who doesn't? There's oh, like yeah. 8 billion people on the planet. Yeah. And Meg, 8 billion people. Exactly, yeah. Aww. Yeah, we always start off with some rondos at practice, so you're always, someone's always getting Megged, which is yeah. not horrible, but... Shameful. Totally shameful. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Well... Vanessa, that's all we got for you today. I mean, thank you so much for being here. Uh, this was a lot of fun. I, I hope people got to learn a little more about you, and we're excited to see you play about uh, what, 15 more games or something this year. <laughs> 20 or something like that, right? Many more, probably. <laughs> yeah. So well, thank, thank you so you much. Guys. Yeah, thank you guys for having me. We appreciate you supporting KC Sports Network by listening to our podcast. You have helped us become the highest ranked Chiefs podcast network in 2022 and 2023. And don't forget about our daily Substack newsletter, the best written analysis you can find on the Chiefs straight to your inbox every day. KCSN.substack.com. Well, there it was, buddy. Uh, we didn't uh, we didn't gush too much, did we? Did we, did we gush? I tried to keep it at a, a minimal gush. We are professional. I know how many games are in a season. <laughs> what the hell? I, sometimes I just say <laughs> Oh, 15 more. 15 more. I don't know what I meant. I, I, go, I go to so many games in a season for men and women, and I'm just, I can't backtrack it, ladies and gentlemen. I don't know anything, and I don't know why you listen to me. I have no idea why. <laughs> there you go. Right. Breaking news. That's why I got to pull in interviews, try to get someone on here. That's worth a damn, because I'm going to say some stupid stuff. <laughs> oh, that's a takeaways from that man that was uh that was fun you think i'm joking about buying a juicer you knew damn well when she said that when she You're said making... it i was like dan's gonna spend some money here in about three days didn't have time but she said get your ginger and turmeric newsflash for you 
I have ginger and turmeric in a little drink concoction every morning. I make it myself every morning. I do two tablespoons of apple cider vinegar, a tablespoon of lemon juice, and then I do a pinch of cayenne, pinch of ginger, pinch of turmeric, pinch of cinnamon, mix that bad boy up, fill it up with water, down the hatch. Do you know how I do that? That's, that's too fancy. I, I'm a three ingredient guy. If I don't have, I can't do more than three ingredients. I need three or less. What are you talking about? I mean, that's just, that's a too thing. Yeah. I mean, you just list off like eight things right there. I was close. It was six. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Seven if you had but the water. After three, I'm out. After three, like I, I will drink whatever. It'll taste horrible. But once you get about five ingredients, like I, I don't know. Can't do it. Well, I, I think about juicing and I just see it like eliminate the vegetable and only get like this amount of juice. And I was like, that's it. That's all I got from that huge carrot. <laughs> so uh, it sounds cool though, man. And and she's doing it, dude. She's bouncing back, getting back on the field, scoring goals. You like how she said that she got that little tap in? And I was like, that was not a tap in. I know, <laughs> you know what you did. <laughs> that was like somebody who was caught between just get a foot on it and blast it as hard as you can. <laughs> right? It was like somebody who was trying to decide what to do as they are going. Bro, I'm going to get nervous and I'm going to blast it over the net. It's going to happen. I've, I've, easy, I've had easier tap ins than that and I've blasted them. Unbelievable. Yeah. I've seen you three feet away from the goal put a sitter over the top. And then and then I've seen you do a ridiculous back heel goal. So I, I don't know what's yeah. going on there. but We'll go ahead and say that was on purpose. But uh... <laughs> <laughs> look, some weird shit happens, man. Uh, what is our little job here? This is like, this is becoming a little fun little deal we got going on, man. Uh, speaking of these world-class athletes, I'm having a blast with you. Yeah. I I mean, thankful to Vanessa, the current Danny, everybody who, um, is allowing us to to have conversations with these amazing athletes and players. But I, one of my favorite things is, you know, getting to know them, like just asking, what do you like to do? I mean, yeah, you know, we probably know some of the answers to the questions that we ask, or at least we think we do. I'm not saying we do, but we think we do. But we kind of get on some of that fun or personal stuff, like uh, like a, like the juicing, like the travel. Yeah, you know, um, I don't know. I, I really enjoy that kind of stuff. It allows you to get to know the person. Uh, I don't want to add name on the back of the jersey. I don't want to ask anything. You could just go find on Google. You know what I mean? I, that's yeah. that's boring. Yeah. Who wants to do that? And who wants to come on and talk about that? Talk about something that they could just say, oh, so you've been on Wikipedia. You know what I mean? Like, and obviously we had to look up her father a little bit and talk a little bit about that, but that's what it is, man. That was a lot of fun. And uh, afterwards they called me out for saying the 15 game thing and I got really red. You see my face right now? It was about as red as your shirt. It got a little red. I got a little, <laughs> got a little hot. About put the hair up. <laughs> God damn it. Oh, man. I don't know. What a fun player, though. What a fun player and a fun person. So Yes. I mean, here's to her health this year. I mean, it's always scary when someone's been injured for so long, but I think to see this little three-game resurgence she's been having, um, she's become a very dangerous player. And with all these other dangerous players on the field, there's going to be moments where those dangerous players are covered, you know, like the big the big names, the international names, and DiBernardo's going to get more chances um, right. to set stuff up or finish goals. It's going to be... Then, then she's going to be the big name player they start covering. We're going to be a hard team to defend. Yeah. Could not be more excited, my guy. We're, we're playing a tough team in Gotham um, on sa- Sunday. So Sunday at five. Yeah, Sunday at five. So, you know, we're going to see how our high-powered offense performs against a really good defense. Going to be good, man. Cool. I'm done gushing. Uh, my face is still a little red. If you can see, I'm trying to breathe it out. Get a little water in me. Um, anything else you want to talk about? No, man. Just the... Uh... What an exciting time in life. You know, yeah. hop in here, talk to some uh, professional soccer players. So, 100%. It's pretty grateful. Hey, we'll, uh, guys, we'll be back next week with uh, another another game recap, uh, another game preview. Maybe USA got the uh, Champions Cup taken care of. We don't know. Or uh, the She Believes Cup, sorry. And we'll uh, talk to you then. So, in the meantime, Hit us up at Dan Couser at Chris Wright 21. No other pod at gmail.com. If you have any questions, any players you want us to reach out for, maybe uh, anyone you think we should talk to, um, you know, leave those five star ratings and reviews. And we will, uh, we'll just see you next time, guys. So for Chris, I'm Daniel. 
and we love you.